sclerosis, a debilitating degenerative neurological disease that can rob you of the ability to use your limbs, control your bladder, think clearly, focus, and perform various other typical daily tasks that most of us take for granted. And now, because you have my label, you might think you know all about me. But really, the label tells you very little. In fact, everybody's experience with MS is different. At this point, I'm not even sure exactly what it means myself. Like many autoimmune diseases, MS ebbs and flows, unpredictably presenting new and unanticipated symptoms. In fact, every day is an adventure. Although my diagnosis is new, my condition is not. The disease has been brewing inside of me for 25 years, actually more than 25 years. Don't try to figure out how old I am. <laughs> I was misdiagnosed with lupus and another autoimmune disease when I first showed symptoms about 25 years ago. But now I'm officially an MS patient, complete with a cane, a medication regimen, a monthly infusion, frequent MRIs, lots of them. I do not like the tunes. Uh, multiple doctor's visits, and more time dealing with insurance companies and medical billing departments that seems reasonable. In effect, I have another full-time job to add to my already overscheduled existence. And yet, I smile a lot. I count my blessings and I still consider myself a very lucky person. Because the MS and all that comes with it is only part of who I am. It's a damn inconvenience to be sure, but it does not define or own me yet. And for as long as I can help it, it never will. Yes, I have a chronic disease, but it doesn't erase the fact that I've enjoyed a great education and I've had a fulfilling career. I am the mom of two wonderful sons. I have a loving extended family, and I share my life with an astoundingly kind, generous, wonderful, supportive husband with whom I look forward to navigating this crazy life of ours. I am indeed lucky. And so, when people say to me, but you look so good, or you have such a good attitude, or my favorite, I don't know how you do it. I'm gracious and grateful, but I don't feel like I'm unique. Everyone fights personal battles that we really know nothing about. Mine just happens to be very visible and has yearly bikeathons and lots of walkathons. <laughs> Given the choice, no question, hands down, I would prefer not to have MS. But I was not given that choice. The choice I have is how I deal with my new reality. I have chosen four guiding principles. Humor, grace, passion, and purpose. These help me overcome the challenge of dealing with my MS. But I made that choice long before the MS diagnosis. Because it has been my experience that being mindful of these four guiding principles can help almost anyone improve his or her life and can engender happiness. First, and probably most important, try to find humor in your challenges. You will find that so many things will not annoy you, or at the very least will annoy you a little less if you deal with them with amusement rather than anger. When it became painfully clear that I could no longer walk effectively without a cane, I was not at all pleased. I tend to be a very vain person, and I really did not want the cane to mess up my look. But instead of railing against it, I decided to embrace the cane. Really, what choice did I have? And even amused myself by writing this haiku and sharing it with others on my Facebook page. Now I have a cane. Actually, I have three. They match my outfits. <laughs> I also
also named the device. Meet John. John McCain. Um, <laughs> not a political statement, I'm a Democrat, but it is funny. <laughs> like the MS, the cane is now an undeniable part of my reality. But I am told I rock this cane. And instead of being embarrassed by it, I embrace it with humor. Next, be graceful and kind. Clearly, I am not now physically graceful. And truth be told, I probably never was. <laughs> but I try to be graceful in spirit. We can all strive to be pleasant, kind, and gentle with ourselves and others. Remember, everyone is dealing with personal battles. Because my disability is so public, I now find that others more readily share their private challenges with me. You would be astounded at the number of cancer patients, those mourning losses, and other secret survivors that are in your midst every day. Our public personas and our private demons are very different. So approach others with respect and generosity of spirit. You really don't know what they're going through, and your warm smile or kind word could make a huge difference. Show respect to the people with whom you interact each day. Your bank teller, postal worker, your child's teacher, the grocery or retail clerk, will all appreciate being recognized as an individual. So will your friends and family. Everyone wants to matter. And remember to give yourself a break. This is really important. Teach your, treat yourself to something fun or special or relaxing each day. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to cost anything. And no one has to know about it except you. It just has to make you smile. And finally, approach each day with passion and purpose. Surround yourself with people who motivate and delight you. Engage in activities that excite you and propel you forward. Collect experiences instead of possessions. Learn something new. Pursue a goal. Follow a dream. Support a cause. Spend your time with people whose company you enjoy and who really make you feel good about yourself. There are so many ways to cultivate your personal talents. Think about what you really love. Do what inspires you and what makes you glad to be alive. You can start small, but be sure to start. And when you suffer a setback, don't give up. Change course. Detours are not stop signs. They are just a different way around. And who knows? You might enjoy the new route. I am asked multiple times daily, what did you do to yourself? Since I don't look sick, people generally assume that I suffered an injury, sometimes even a sports injury. <laughs> when I tell them what's really going on, they're usually apologetic and uncomfortable. But I don't blame the inquisitive stranger. I smile and move on. I may no longer have strong legs or abundant energy, but I still have strong ambition and abundant passion. I start each day with the intention to be productive and to find and share joyful moments. Some days are harder than others. I'm not Pollyanna, and I am excruciatingly aware of what I can no longer do. I'm still wrapping my brain around this new reality. But I choose to appreciate what I have rather than lament what I don't. Most importantly, I try not to let the things I can't do get in the way of the things that I can do. Literally or figuratively, for as long as I can, I will stand on my own two feet and keep moving forward with humor, grace, passion, and purpose, striving never again to be that disaster on the side of the road.